Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habita fillah The question was asked <coughs> Shaykh al-Albani said Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasi on the Hadi Imam al-Albani said the symptoms of weak faith is tightness in the chest mood swings and depression which weigh a man down and make him quick to complain about the slightest thing Shaykh al-Albani al-Silsila al-Sahiha How does one remove this tightness in the chest and how do they know if they take whatever means it will be removed? Will it be removed immediately? First and foremost, Ahabati Fillah, <clears throat> when it comes to many of these Masail, they go back to Iman. In essence, we're just talking about weak Iman and how to remove weak Iman. And we know Iman to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah Yazid bi ta'a wa yanqus bi ma'asiya that iman it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it decreases with disobedience to Allah so when a person does a good deed this is a part of iman because this is a, a, a this is a amal al amal bi jawarih this is a, a a deed that's done uh, a physical deed, maybe extra prayer, maybe uh, a charity, or it could be the other aspects of iman, dealing with the you know because iman is a is a belief in the heart, uh, actions on the tongue, statements of the tongue. So it could be a type of dhikr that a person's making and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and may Allah forgive us and grant us success. I mean, ya Rabbil Alamin. Uh, or it could be uh, the physical act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things are part of the iman and they increase your iman. So that, that's the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it. Sometimes simply a fact, you know, having a correct intention and you know you're in sin, doing just a good deed. Because as the Prophet sallallahu said, a good deed, it erases the bad deed. So that is how we can, we can deal with our own wicked sins, as we can do some good deeds, follow up a bad deed with a good deed. So the more you increase with your good deeds, this is going to help increase your iman. And likewise, it's going to remove some of the ran ala, uh, that's on your heart that we mentioned prior to this, that every time we do a sin, as the hadith of, uh, I believe it's Abu Huraira, or it could be Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that every time we do a sin that a black dot is uh, appears on the heart and this is the rana ala kulubihim this is the 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 covering that's on the heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah al-mutaffifin so letting us know that when we increase in sin we begin to cover the heart more and you really feel that. And I believe that this is what Imam al-Albani is talking about here when he says tightness in the chest, mood swings and depression because you feel that when you're out of pocket. When you know that you're wrong and you're doing sins, you know, you, you feel guilty. And that is also a product of Iman because the one whose heart is totally covered or who disbelieves in Allah, they do wickedness and they don't even, it doesn't fade them. They go to the club, they drink, they smoke, they f do this and that, and they don't even feel sorrow. They actually want to get more. They're looking forward to tomorrow to do more ma'asi, ma'asiyah. And so even a person who, who has some, some iman, you know, that they're in the fold of Islam, they're a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, what is amazing, and I can bear witness to this myself, is when I wasn't a, a, a Muslim even, and even, so even non-Muslims, sometimes they feel the weight, they feel the weight of sin, of course. They feel the weight of sin. But some people are just so far out there, it, it, they're gone, and they have a dead heart. But the one whose heart is alive, and they're looking for guidance, they're looking for khair, that they feel weighed down by sin, they feel some shame, they feel some guilt. And this has to do, for the believer, this is the athar of iman. So this is an effect of iman that you're even concerned about your iman. So this is what I want to give hope to those young, those new Muslims, people who are new to Islam, coming in, 
and beating themselves up and very hard on themselves. We get a lot of questions from people who are saying, you know, I, I disbelieved. Oh, I, I, I uh, you know, I disbelieved yesterday, but now I'm Muslim today. You know, all these kind of things that we didn't even deal with when we were new Muslims. We didn't think like that. Now, perhaps we were to the other extreme. But we see people now who are to such an extreme, they're reading so much and they're benefiting some of the things, but they don't necessarily have the correct understanding and they're making takfir of themselves and making takfir of this one. I saw so-and-so doing so, does that mean they're a hypocrite? I think I'm a hypocrite because, you know, these, uh, there's an aspect of khair in there, a goodness in that they're concerned about their soul and they're concerned about kufr and being a hypocrite, but there's also a bit Sometimes we see extremeness, uh, people being extreme in some of these aspects. And so we have to be cautious and we should be concerned. So again, going back to the mas'ala at hand, that when we do sins and so forth, we feel the, uh, the effects of that. So that's why it's upon us. And this is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made his istighfar and tawbah more than 70 times a day, as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And toba, uh, which differs from istighfar, you know, seeking forgiveness, toba is actually, there are steps or conditions. And Ibn al-Qayyum, he mentions about these steps of toba or the ta'rif of toba, the, 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 the definition of, to, uh, of toba. He said, فَحَقِيقَ تَتَوْبَ هِيَ النَّدَمْ عَلَى مَا سَلَفَ مِنْهُ so the reality of Toba, of repentance, is that a person feels sorrow for what they did before. And he said, and, and so, so you're feeling this sorrow, and that you stop, you cease to do it. You know, now you're 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 stopping now. You're you're uh, actually stopping the sin. And the determination to not go back to that sin in the future. Those are the conditions of toba. And then he says, Toba. He said, in these three things, they come together at one time, and then this is what is considered toba, that you have all of this. And, and then he mentions, he reiterates for us what that means. Sorrow for what you did, ceasing what you do, and uh, determination to not go back to that sin. And we know that Allah all throughout the Quran mentions toba. So this is what is going to, uh, going back to the question, this is what's going to help to remove the tightness in the chest. And uh, as far as it being removed immediately, or will it take time? That depends on the individual, but well, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But I believe, and you can see this from our own experiences, that when you leave off sins, for example, now we're in Ramadan, you feel better for those who are benefiting from the Ramadan and actually stopping, even stopping some of the things that they do normally that might be permissible. Maybe they watch documentaries, maybe they watch, but even Ramadan because they want to focus on ibadah and focus on other things and Islamic lectures and doing other activities that they've even left some of the normal things that may not, that may be okay, that are permissible, but not, uh, you know, sinful. And so, by leaving off that from what are, from extra um, uh, humility and humbleness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, uh, you know, you feel healthier. You feel healthier. You feel like you're benefiting. Your heart feels a little bit better when you're conscious. So when you're actually doing, you know, Ramadan helps, you know, fasting and being conscious of your fast and making toba actually when you make toba from a sin, especially those who fight sins that they fight for a long period of time, for example, people who fight 
leaving zina. But most of the time, that's a that's a, a, a process, especially for new Muslims. A lot of times, for those who are active in their their jahiliyyah, that is not usually, I, most of the people that I know and the experiences that we've seen is that it's not an overnight thing. Maybe they do make toba, but then they fall into it often. You know, it's a process. The point is, is that it's a process. It takes time to work on those sins. They don't, you know, because it's a... Uh, it deals with your hawa and many other things. Likewise, some and people who suffer from drug addiction, that's a whole different type of addiction. And now, unlike in my generation, but now the way pornography is as a an addictive process, you know, it changes your mental state of how you interact with other human beings, how you see the world, you, you see male and female completely these things they reprogram you they say they reprogram the mind literally there's you know and these kind of studies are ongoing the effects we can't even we can only begin to understand the effects uh, of this type of this new because it, it's new in the sense to the level that it is now literally i can talk to you now on one screen and another screen i can type in a word and anything that follows your desires can come up anything i don't care if you like a dog and a cat and a mule not to be graphic and may Allah protect us, but it's there. And this is the danger. We're in a great, dangerous time. And as Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, these two ways that, you know, the shaitan and the sin come to us through our shahwat and shubahat, through uh, our, our, our desires, okay? And so that would fit under the desires. And the shubahat, you know, coming through doubtful means and it could be from, uh, you know, newly invented itiqad and new, newly invented ibadah and bid'ah. All of these things are, uh, could, could come to you and attack you and attack your iman and destroy your iman. So, so it, it depends upon the person. But again, going back to the question, and sorry to get off topic, but to deal with this tightness in the chest. And as far as it being removed, the sooner and the more that a person does more good deeds, ta'atillah, and makes toba for the sins that they do, and makes sincere istighfar, and lots of dhikr on their tongue, remembering Allah as much as possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Wa tubu ilallah jami'an, ayyul mu'minun la'allakum tuflihun. That ayat right there, I don't need to say anything. It's done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you make a repentance to Allah. And he did it in the imperative form. الْأَمْرِ يُفِيدَ الْوُجُوبِ It's a command, it's an obligation. And it's asal. And here it's an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you make tawbah. All of you repent. All of us. Because we think we're, we're okay. Some of us may, may not be into the major sins. We have minor sins. We, we have sins all the time. Wutubu Allahi Jimian. Who did he address? Ayyul Mu'minin. Oh, you believers. And then what did he say? What's the natija? What's the result? What's the benefit? La'alakum tuflihun. In order that you, you, you gain success. So if you want success and you want to remove some of this tightness in your heart and the, those, those, those feelings and mood swings and depression, then this can be a step in that direction because we can't say that that's it because there are believers, all of us suffer from different issues and ailments. Some people actually have literal depressive issues that may not have to do necessarily with their iman. It may be chemical imbalances in their body, you know, psycho, uh, psychological illnesses. There are people with Jinn. There are people with who have been affected by the Ain. And there are people who literally are have have a sickness, have a disorder, a mental disorder, or some type of dementia, whatever the case may be. So everyone's situation is different. But you will never lose with this uh Islamic medicine, Elaj, Islami. And that is through Toba, making repentance, istighfar and righteous deeds and that is from the sunnah 
of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala remove the tightness, the mood swings, the depression from all of us, all the sicknesses that we have, the physical disorders, the mental and the spiritual disorders, and may Allah bless us with Iman, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the Ikhlas, with the Bad Allah Sunnah, and may Allah bless us to die upon that. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.